Been caught, dropped at the 29 yard line. The intended receiver out there was James Battle. Let's take a look at the Wade Cook Financial Group offensive line and what a line it is. Big fellas, White, Ramirez, D. Domenico, Cook, and Garden up front. And an experienced group. Ken Simonson, the young freshman over 700 yards thus far this year. Ainsworth, Alexander Tompkins, and Kaikendall. Oregon's set up lone man in the backfield and Bryant once again to throw he's going to screen pass right side for a gainer 25 across the 30 tripping and just short of the 40 yard line on the reception was Ken Symington and Steve they set that one up beautifully. Well we haven't seen much screen this year out of Oregon State uh, this is something new they haven't featured it but Ken Symington has great great hands only nine catches thus far. Sonny a pickup of 18 for Oregon State and take a look at the defensive line they've been outstanding this has been the key really I think to the 26 sacks over the two games for Washington. Absolutely you see also the Brendan Jones the senior back there at safety is going to could be active against this passing attack. Ken Walker in at linebacker for Marcus Hairston who has had a an injury this week that's hampered him and we've seen Kenny Walker turn in some outstanding performances as Bryant on the first down situation tried to swing it near side to Roddy Tompkins incomplete it'll be second down for the Beavers. We've already seen what's happened to the Beavers a lot this year drop passes fumbles and penalties that's two drop passes already and it can't happen and win football games. Huskies have changed up their defense a little bit this week. They're playing their receivers a little closer to the line, as we can see here now. They're going to bump them at the line, aren't they? A little more pressure. You know, they've been getting a lot of sacks, as we had talked about, being very active, and that's bringing linebackers. And right there, you see Lester Towns, who, by the way, Kevin, is getting healthier and healthier every week. Ken Simons and shoestring by Lester Towns. He's had a great impact on the Husky defensive fortunes over the last couple of weeks. What about those white pants? What's the story there, Sonny? <laughs> it's a co-captain decision today, guys. Uh, Coach Lambright said the co-captains came to him, wanted to make a little change, do something a little bit different. And you know, when co-captains bring that up, it means it's a team thing. And Coach Lambright said, hey, if that's the way it's going to be, let's do it, and let's do it right. Third down and eight. And Ken Simonton thinks he's at home at Corvallis. is exalting the crowd to whoop it up. Third and eight for Oregon State. Beaver quarterback Brian back to throw. Swing pass right side. Complete to Simon at 45 at the 50. He stood up, but a flag on the play. Penalties have been a problem for the Beavers this year, but let's see what the early indication is. Well, it was thrown so late, it looked like a late quarterback hit. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. Wow. Normally you get those Kevin when the, the whistle blows before the play starts and you can see on the scoreboard here that uh, it does have a big zero looks like that Oregon State letter up there. <laughs> so the penalty pushes them back to the 30 just shy of the 35 yard line so it's third and 13 now for Oregon State. Ryan back to throw he's got Simon coming out of the back door running around but he's going to fling it here to the near side and that was too tall on off the fingertips. Of his intended receiver down there, Robert Prescott. Local kid here, guys, uh, as Steve knows, out of Kennedy High School, Kevin. And he's had a very good year. Uh, he was injured early on, missed a couple of three games, just starting to come back uh, from a leg injury. Joe Jarzinka back to receive the Beaver punt. Jarzinka with 27 returns this year, averages 12 per, and of course had the 91 yard blast last week against Cal, and he never fair catches, folks, even inside his own 10. Here's the boot. It's a wobbler. Off to the left side that takes a husky bounce for two of his bounce rolls up to the 44 yard line. So that ball kind of sucked up the field and headed down toward Beaver territory. A punt of just 21 yards net and the Huskies hold the football for the first time this afternoon and Brock Ewart is back 6 5 and 225. The junior from Puyallup Washington and you can bet he is anxious to get back in the flow 56 percent completion average. I think he is though guys but I think what the Huskies are going to do they're going to come out and try and get that running back running attack going right now you see Pat Conniff another guy they've been missing in a two back set they haven't had that in a while Steve. Well, the Beavers were run on last week uh, very well by the University of Arizona. They just piled it up in a power eye tried to run over him because of their size. It looks like the dogs have that plan. The senior Jason Harris would have give up the medal and a gain maybe of a yard on the play. Let's take a look at the offensive unit. From Washington this afternoon Elliot Silvers Tony Coates Brad Hutch Chad Ward and Aaron Dalen up front. 
broadcast for the Huskies. Dane Looker will move back to the H back position. Jason Harris, Andre Desishir, Gerald Harris, and Reggie Davis, the other receivers. Second down, nine for the Huskies. Ball resting at their own 45 yard line. Here's the handoff. And it's Harris pushing his way across into Oregon State territory, and they'll mark it at about the 49 yard line. Oregon State defensively, and I should add, you're looking at the Pac 10's number one and number two defensive sack units this year with the Beavers' number two, Jamil Braithwaite. Did I pronounce that right, Steve? Close. And he's a good one. Well, give, it, give, give me the correct pronunciation. Jamil Braithwaite. Braithwaite, there we go. Rogers, Jackson, and Jones, Holland, Hatcher, Carroll, and Hayward Johnson. And that's a good defensive group that they put on the field. 12 interceptions thus far this year for Oregon State as well. Play action, handoff right side. Jarzinka from the H back position trying to turn the corner, hauled down and spun out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Jonathan Jackson there to cover for Oregon State. A little fancy play here by the dogs. You see a little end around, got the H back coming in motion. And one thing the Huskies need to do, Steve, is they're they need to get a little Joe in the action a little bit, and this time a good call by the uh, Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator. And you see what the Beavers uh, depend on, speed. That's the middle linebacker getting out there to make the play. Joe Jarzinka accounts for over 100 all-purpose yards per ball game, and he picks up seven there for the first half of the Huskies. Here's the handoff, and running off the left side and picking up uh, a few hard-earned yards. We'll see who they pick up off the stadium floor. Pat well, Conniff, who's had some knee problems recently, but he's finally healthy this week. That's right. And, you know, Coach Lambright this week, when he stepped his foot on the field, you could just see a different presence by that offense. It's, you know, Steve, when you have a big fullback, and you played with big fullbacks in your day with Earthquake and everything in Oregon State, it means a lot having a little bit bigger guy in that backfield. Well, it certainly does. And also as a blocker, uh, to have that kind of lead man really helps. Man in motion, Dane Looker, he's the H back. They try to track him. Here's Ewart, he's going to snap a pass over here to the left side. It's Reggie Davis rumbling his way inside the 15 yard line, brought down at about the 13. Davis fouled the seam over there as they brought Looker to that side. The Oregon State had a lot of people to keep track of, a pickup of 25 on the hookup. Steve, you see him coming from the left side. He's going to just go out to the outside. Now, Reggie Davis is a very fast tight end. You can see by his waistline right there, he's not typical of the big blocking tight ends the Huskies have had in the past. And you've got to have a man on him with some speed, and that time he got the advantage. Well, no doubt. And, and Oregon State is missing their starting free safety. Terrence Carroll has not played since about the second quarter last week. It is a huge difference from the Beavers. Two-man backfield, and now Harris will go in motion. Here's the handoff. Pat Conniff out of Woodenville, rumbling his way across the 10 yard line and finally brought down at about the eight. So Pat kind of picks up five six yards on the play and the Huskies grinding it on the ground a bit now. Well that's what if they wanted to try and establish today against the Beavers very tough defense. We've known that we talked about it and right here you see a tremendous hole in the middle Steve and hadn't been for Jonathan Jackson he might have gone all the way. Well, this is a smallish defensive line for Oregon State. They are not big. They won't compare in size to the Huskies' offensive line. They bring in a lot of bodies to make up for it. Conniff and Harris, the two men split in the backfield now. Here's the handoff to Pat Conniff, and he heads like a missile right up the middle. And again, inside the five yard line, grinds away to the four. Well, that's what you want to do. You want to stay low to the ground and keep your head and your, and your weight and all your. Your body momentum going forward and Pat Conniff, great job by a fullback right there. Brian Jones, Aaron Wells, team on the tackle for the Beavers. You know, Steve, you mentioned the size of the Beaver defensive front and Kevin. I've never seen a defensive front as short <laughs> as that right. defensive four. And you know, you've got a quarterback that's 6'5, there's no nobody gonna be in your eyesight. No, this is a smallish team. In fact, a lot of these guys uh, are not as big as the linebackers playing behind them. Inoki Brechter Field, the end is 5'11, but 250. And with a career 17 and a half sacks. Here's Harris in motion. But the handoff goes to Pat Conniff. He's the money man on this charge inside the red zone of the Oregon State Beavers. And he grinds his way again inside the two yard line. Brechter Field's the team leader, the emotional leader out there. Does a great job of just raising havoc. Uh, he has to be double teamed in order to keep him out of the quarterback's face, or else the other idea is to run right at him, take advantage of his size. 20 out of 29 of the Huskies this year inside the red zone. 
And out of the 20, they've had 18 TDs. No score yet. 8:57 going. You got Marcus Tuiasosopo in there now. <laughs> and they switch Brock Hewitt out to the slot left side where they've got trips. He's going to option right. Tui's in for the touchdown, but a flag flies right near the goal line. And the Beavers are indicating maybe a hold on Washington. Great weapon, a quarterback like that. A little trickery. <laughs> and it happened so quick. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty to the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Yeah, it looked like Tony Coates may have made a little tackle down there on the line. Let's take a look. Look at your left guard, 67. Right there, just nice <laughs> tackle. Good form on that one, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Huskies have beaten the Beavers 10 straight, 20 of the last 21. But last year, remember, they were tied 10 10 at half in Corvallis before the Huskies needed some third quarter explosions to get it going. Marcus Tuyas is so smiling now, <laughs> but on the sideline as Brock takes over, second and 12 for the Huskies, and the ball resting at the 13 yard line of Oregon State. Brock back to throw, looking right corner, now looking middle. Man wide open, touchdown, Jurgens, the freshman from Olympia. Beautifully thrown dart in the end zone. Brock Hewitt with a TD. He's the all-time leader here at the University of Washington. A 13-yard hookup for the score. I tell you guys, uh, Brock Hewitt had all kinds of time to throw that football, and it allowed him time to find from the left side. Chris Jurgens lined up coming across the middle. Stephen, you really can't. Uh, you got to get some pressure on Brock Hewitt. Well, you have to. The Beavers put a lot of pressure on people, but they don't do it by bringing bodies uh, defensively they try to keep a free safety sunny and it isn't going to work today the way it looks like Joe Jarzinka adds the extra point and the Huskies have drawn first blood in this homecoming matchup here at Husky Stadium it's Washington 7 and Oregon State nothing we'll be right back in a moment Well, the Washington Huskies take the early lead 7-0. The hookup from Brock Hewitt, his 43rd career touchdown pass, his seventh of the year for Chris Jurgens. He is going to be a quality receiver at the university. Jurgens, who remember he was hesitant to even go on the on the first road trip of the year to Arizona. He said he wasn't ready. He said he was nervous. Well, he's come up big. Nine plays, 55 yards to drive for the Huskies. Jurgens with a 13-yard TD reception, his third of the year. He must have been right, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> He's a late bloomer. Yeah. But he picked the right time to come on, given an opportunity because of all the Husky injuries. He's done a wonderful job. Tim Alexander, 35 and a half yards per kickoff return. Dangerous receiver is back. Skirsky, the freshman, kicks this high into the air. Is it a pooch kick? We'll see. It floats down to the 35. Wisely, Oregon State will fair catch the football down at the 36. Then the receiver is hammered. Didn't give him enough room to field the ball, but normally in that situation, Steve, the guy receiving the ball would put his hand up and take a little fair catch action. He didn't do that, whoever it was. Actually, he did get it up. Did I think that's I what they're going to call. That yeah, was a fair catch. Oregon State has been uh, pooch kicked for the last three weeks. Uh, Alexander is too good. The teams have simply not kicked to him. Oregon State this week has stopped using tight ends to return it, and they've got all kinds Five of running yards, backs. Fair catch, kick catch interference on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, first and ten. Too much white down there, Kevin. I couldn't <laughs> tell with those Husky white pants. <laughs> <laughs> so Let's review the Husky <laughs> touchdown, gentlemen. Take a look at this ball thrown by Brock Ewart. You see him take the well. One thing he's got back this week, Steve, is, is Dane Looker. He's looking to the right, right here, trying to pick up Looker. But watch this. Here's what the teams are starting to do. A little inside-out action on him, delaying him near the line of scrimmage. But as I said earlier, Brock Ewart had all kinds of time to throw the football. Well, he did, and the Beavers got stuck in a situation they don't want. 
which is to have a linebacker trying to cover a wide receiver. Yeah, they had double coverage on Dane Looker that time, and Looker playing the position that he was uh, originally intended to play, and he obviously had the 11 receptions against Arizona, the H back position, and which is a Explain the difference between playing that flanker and the H back for a receiver. Well, I think Dane Lookers, his best attribute, guys, is his quickness and short, short yardage type routes. He is not a guy that's going to go out there and that you have to really fear going deep on you with with all out speed. That is not a Dane Looker receiver. Beaver receivers, a tandem left and a duo right. Terrence Bryant, the junior quarterback, with a handoff and a gain maybe of a yard, but stopped at the line of scrimmage. Ken Simonton. Steve Simonton. Is on his way to becoming one of the all-time greats at Oregon State already as a redshirt freshman with over 700 yards rushing. What do you what do you like about his game? Well, he's short. Number one, they can't <laughs> find him. That's right. Uh, they cannot see him behind what is a very big offensive line at Oregon State. He's got great strength in the lower body, changes direction well, got very good speed, but he's deceptive partially because they just can't find him. Now, Steve, also the coaches were telling me the Huskies that uh, they like his vision. And he's got yeah. great vision and able to bounce it outside. Tremendous ability that way. Third and eight, right back to throw. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's got wide open running room up the middle. 40, 35, 30, could go. No, upended. Inside the 30 yard line, caught by the back flow of the Huskies. Wide open lane for Terrence Bryant, and he's a guy that can tuck it and go. He didn't have the big yardage numbers on the year, but it's quite obvious he's an athlete. Well, he's a great athlete, and he has not done this enough, Kevin. He has had the opportunity, but he trusts his arms so much that he'll try to drill a ball in. He missed a couple of chances to score on bootlegs because he trusts his arm, and this is a good sign for Oregon State. Well, he had up until the Stanford game 170 receptions without interception, a phenomenal number, which is all-time Oregon State, all-time Pac-10. So you can see why he's got such great confidence in his throwing ability. Here's the handoff to Simonton, who picks up some hard-earned yardage across the 25 of the Huskies. 7.08 clock running first quarter Huskies lead the Beavers 7 nothing and the Beavers have some quality people they're very optimistic in Corvallis they're talking about maybe showing up at a bowl this year. Well that and they're they're getting to the area where they have a lot of su success in that red zone but right there you had Lester Towns low and to Butler coming up uh, the little cornerback having a pretty good shot. <laughs> well Ken Simonton one of the knocks on Ken so far is he's fumbled the ball. He's put it on the ground a bunch of times lost six fumbles so far. How come your fingers are crossed and your legs are crossed up here Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Simonton is upended flipped uh, up into the air and I think it was uh, Ken was it Walker. Tuiaia? Yeah Mac Tuiaia actually submarined him and he went up into the air and then Kenny Walker made sure he was secured to the ground. This is such an impressive defense. The, the sacks, 26, that's a season, let alone two games. <laughs> yes, it is. Number one in the Pac-10. And the Huskies have protected the quarterback well this year as well. Simonton, four carries, 13 yards today. 6.06 remaining in the first period of play. And Bryant will just keep it. Lean for the needed one or two yards for the first down and needed a yard. He's been very successful at that. He uh, is an athlete. He knows where to put his nose and follow it. And he's gotten most of the first downs that he's tried in that situation. Well, I tell you, if my center was uh, 311 pounds, I think I'd get right on that, too. <laughs> that was a good call, guys. This is a true sophomore center. He played a lot a year ago out of Salem, uh, uh, Kaiser High School, I believe, and an outstanding wrestler. He's thin at that size and weight, too. Big <laughs> kid. Saw Jonathan Smith, the backup freshman quarterback, a moment ago. Throwing signals to Mike Riley out to Terrence Bryant. Oregon State picks up the first down. Bryant back to throw. Sets. Won't fire. Scrambling left side. Has downfield blocking 10. Driven out of bounds at the seven yard line as Brendan Jones, the redhead, got over there to knock him out of bounds. It's kind of funny. You look at this play, and you had Lester Towns on a on a man to man coverage. And he ran right, staying with his man. You see on the left-hand side coming up, but Terrence Bryant right here with a good move. There, there goes the linebacker with his man and allowing Bryant outside. Just as good as a block. Well, maybe Oregon State has hit on something here. Bryant has been the man from broken plays to lead them down the field, chucking and running. And the Huskies, let's face it, have been susceptible to that this year. The option quarterback, 521 left in the first quarter. Bryant left side, handoff Simonton. Scooting off left side, nice cut back off the block, leaves ahead and in for the touchdown. Simonton makes a sensational cutback off the block to the sideline. He read that beautifully, guys. 
Sonny, you mentioned this earlier. Ken Simonton has great vision, has a great cutting ability, too. He's done this many times and made a lot of yards by himself, but good blocking. Watch 76, Jason White outside. Now, everybody was blocked. Josh Smith, you see, losing his balance there, but Simon, you're right. Nice cut back, well timed to get in the end zone. The Beavers have an excellent kicking game when you consider that uh, they've got a guy that just absolutely parks the long ball. He kicks it. Joe Cor Jose Cortez, 10 of 15 from field goal range this year, and he has hit some beauties. For example, he's 3 of 4 from 50 yards or better. There's Ken Simonton. Who comes up with a touchdown? The Beavers trail by one seven six. The Beavers had to use some time to get uh, some folks out on the football field, and the flag now flies as they use too much time. Steve, how can this happen? You know, you guys have been practicing. Uh, <laughs> we just talked about the special teams. There have been several times the last two games, four or five that I can think of, were little mistakes like this. There was an injury. I could see that fellow running in at the end as a backup guard, been a starter part time. He was fixing his helmet down here on the sideline. Wasn't in the game. Just a mistake, and it's cost him. Luckily, here five yards shouldn't hurt uh, Jose. Jose Cortez nearly automatic. And he kicks barefoot. He's got the sock on today, though. It's cool. Here's the kick. It's up. It's good. And we're tied at 7-7. So Oregon State and Washington are locked in the tie with 5:14 left in a. Fast moving first quarter. We'll be right back in a moment. Seven seven ball game Oregon State and Washington and you know Oregon State wins football games when they don't turn the ball over and they're the least penalized of the two teams on the field Mike Riley's had a terrible time thus far this this year with the penalties. Ken Simonton accounts for the score for Oregon State. Yes Oregon State was able to put the ball on the on the field and run it up the the distance of the field with Terrence Bryant doing a great deal of the work from the quarterback position. Well, interestingly enough, last week the Beavers started out the same way but dropped the ball twice in the first two series, costing them drives. Jose Cortez will kick and Jerry Butler will receive the ball, scrambling his own five, cuts to the near side 20, turns the corner 25, trying to cut back, shoestring tripped up at the 30 yard line. Good return for Mr. Butler, a return of 27 yards. Great hang time on that kickoff, though. I uh, th that was a great job by the Oregon State kicker Cortez that time. Tremendous hang time and good coverage downfield, Steve. Very good coverage team. Cortez puts so many of them in the end zone that special teams coach Bruce Reed gets worried because his team doesn't get to practice it very often. <laughs> they had been two full games with about eight or nine kickoffs without a coverage three weeks ago and then won a football game at Stanford by covering and knocking the ball loose in the end zone. Huskies bring it out. They scored in their first possession of the afternoon. You are rolling out passing on the move. And the pass complete to Dane Looker, his ex high school teammate at Puyallup, a pickup of about five yards on the connection. That throw right there, Steve. Now, if you just separate your shoulder a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. that ball had a little bit of snap on it. <laughs> huh? He has got a great delivery, doesn't he? Wonderful delivery. Later tonight after the game it's Fox Sports News primetime college football scores and highlights NHL news your hometown teams. We are there Fox Sports News primetime immediately following the game on Fox Sports Northwest. Second and five of the Huskies. You are the starting quarterback this afternoon in play action Jason Harris. Flags fly free play Harris right side at the, the 40 yard line dragged down. 
exchange of pleasantries after the play over there as Jason Harris locks in with Armin Hatcher. Hatcher coming up for the tackle. Offsides on the defense. Five yard penalty. First and ten. Offsides on Oregon State. Mike Riley doesn't like what he's seen so far in terms of the penalties because it's cost him this year. Really makes it tough to sustain anything when you have a fumble penalty drop ball, you know, like we did against Arizona. That's the most disappointing thing that happened in that game to me is that we allowed those things to happen, and, and I don't think they controlled them as much as we made those mistakes. Turnovers have cost him. OSU has lost all three times. It's been on the negative side in turnovers against Arizona. They fumbled it away four times in the football game. Lost it 28 to 7 last weekend. You were back to throw. Steps, pumps, long ball outside. Desishore hooks up, makes the catch at the 20. Flags all over the place. Desishore was grabbed along the near sideline when the ball was in midair. He still was able to make the catch. Ricky Walker hold him down. A pickup of 40. On the play. Ricky Look. Walker, uh, a starting running back for the Beavers last year. A good idea of the depth change you see here. He's a pretty good man to man cover guy. Got beaten to. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a young man right here. Andre Desisher has the speed, Steve. He came out of Los Angeles with a lot of records down there in the inner city uh, track meets. And right there, you got to watch out for this guy. You may not have Jawarn Hooker out there, but. But that young man and Ricky Walker has going to have his hands full most of the day. And you said it earlier too. When Brock Hewitt has time like that, the Beavers are in trouble. Gerald Harris, Desisure, and Looker all wide to the right side. Jason Harris is the lone back. Huskies now first and ten. And play action, the handoff going off the right side, and that's what Jim Lambright was talking about this week. The line has got to sustain their blocks. And the running backs have got to do a better job of continuing their surge, staying on their feet and pressing ahead for two, three, four extra yards as Harris picked up that time. Well, a running back is dead in the water if they don't keep those legs moving. You got to keep them pounding right there. A little spin move. Got a little help from <laughs> everybody in there. <laughs> that helps a little bit, Steve. It does. 342 left in the first quarter and the Huskies and Beavers tied at 7-7 with Sonny Six Killer and Steve Priest, Kevin Calabro alongside Ewart to the handoff left side. Harris gallops across the 10 yard line and once again the Huskies inside the red zone go right between those hash marks with just good old fashioned football. Aaron Wells with a tackle for the Beavers. Let's take a look at Jason Harris here. We talked about the vision on the other side of the ball. Let's see if. Jason Harris, his head is up. He is looking for a hole to run in. But I thought it was a great play on the inside by Aaron Wells to, to get an arm on him. Well, it certainly is. But you think of Aaron's size, 243 pounds, Sonny. <laughs> well, he showed some quickness. Then. <laughs> he did. Yike. The offset, Harris in the backfield. Big handoff. Ewart rolls. Quick snap throw to the five-yard line. It's Joe Terzica. Mojo is rising that time as he came off his feet with a fingertip control. He's hauled down at the three yard line. Well, you know, when you run the ball and, you, and the Huskies have come out and tried to get that established today, you can get some play action going and open up those little H back receivers. Steve, when you're on the inside, it doesn't take much of a fake right here, although the ball was delivered a little high. Joe did go up and get the football. Well, that fake just brings the defensive end, in this case, Brechterfield, out of the play just enough. To get to you at the time to complete it. Nice catch. Brock Ewart has been sharp. Five for five, 88 yards in the TD this afternoon. The link up to Chris Jurgens. It's caught up in the backfield and they tighten up both sides. They've got everybody up on the line trying to wedge block and Conniff is stacked up at the three. You know, this week in practice, Kevin, Steve, they were working on this power formation because they haven't had that surge inside the five yard line or first and goal. So that time you had Conniff and uh, I couldn't quite get the number, but they have two guys off the special teams because the guys on the wedge, mm -hmm. they learned how to surge inside. It looked like a single wing. Uh, it it did, exactly. Me. You may not remember that a little bit before your time, but I, <laughs> it did look like a before single mine. wing to me. <laughs> Dawson, I think, might have been one of the extra people out there, Sony you referred to. Here is Ewart back to throw. Man wide open down the far side. It is Desisure. He was flanked out there and nobody saw him. There wasn't a beaver in sight, but there's a flag out at the five yard line. Did he line up offsides? That's my first question. 
That was like the old lonely end you used to see. I don't think he came out of the huddle, did he, Sonny? I, I didn't quite notice that, but the what happened to the Huskies a few years ago against Notre Dame, a DB got uh, a little confused, looked back towards the huddle and forgot about the guy on the outside. Let's see who's at fault here. No touchdown. Unsportsmanlike penalty. The, the substitute never came within the nine uh, yard mark, therefore was ineligible to catch the pass. So it was a long way in. The 15 yard penalty, the spotted foul, the feet third down. In other words, he didn't come out close enough to the huddle. Right. Somebody's pointing. You see it right there. The, the corner on the right side has realized that he doesn't have anybody and somebody's missing. Well, the official called that right away, so there wasn't. It wasn't a late call on that one. There's, there's a guy I wouldn't want to back to go back to the sideline and tell him I didn't make it nine yards out of the field. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Landbright in his sixth year as the head coach of the Huskies. Now to third and 18 situation. Well, let's see what they sent in for Brock Ewart. Brock back to throw. Five step drop sets. Rifles a pass in the end zone. There's a man hauled down in the end zone. Gerald Harris was pulled down before the ball got there. That's interference. Ricky Walker once again victimized by a Husky receiver. Well, you know, Oregon State's a little shorthanded. Uh, their free safety, Terrence Carroll, is out with an injury, Steve. So they've had to reshuffle some things back there. Well, they've shuffled people around Oregon State. Terrence on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First and goal. Oregon State has also uh, lost some people that are ineligible for academics. Take a look here. He's pretty well covered. Just get the right hand off and you're you've got a good defensive play. It's it's taking it to the next level, isn't it, Steve? I mean, as a defensive back, you're in position. You see Mike Riley there, a little disappointed, but there's just those little things. You know, you go over in practice and, and all of a sudden you think you can get away with it and you cannot out here with these guys with the yellow flag. Well, absolutely, and, and particularly when you lose a leader like Terrence Carroll, big play guy. First down and three. And at the three, the Jackson pushing and shoving. After the whistle, the uh, Huskies are able to grind it up to about the one yard line. Like Reggie Davis and Micah Moore down there, guys. <laughs> Just a little, uh, you know, competitiveness down there. <laughs> Micah Moore is a smallish linebacker, but just has great speed. Plays the strong side linebacker position in a backup position, but plays a lot. Runs uh, four fives, can get all over the field, but certainly gives it away at just over 200 pounds. Second and goal to go for the Huskies. Ball at the two. Split backfield. Ewart rolling out behind the block, looking to throw on the move. Throws it out of the end zone. He was knocked down, but quickly picks himself up. That's a tough throw down on the near sideline. You're running out of room. You've got a short end of the field. You don't have distance to work with. And there must have been three Beavers in coverage down there, Steve. I mean, there's no place to go. And Brock Hewitt got hurt on a play like that earlier this season. Got dinged up a little bit. You like to kind of see, well, you see Marcus Tuyasasopo coming in. What a, what a talent Hewitt is. When things do go bad, he knows where to throw it. Marcus Tuyas Sopo has run for five touchdowns already this year. He's lined up in the H-back position. Here at the quarterback, the handoff to Tui, trying to go left side. Big hit in the backfield, bubbles the ball. Oregon State recovers, but a flag on the play. So there will be a lot to sort out on this play. But a nice stop turned in by the Beavers linebacker down there. Jonathan Jackson got him in the backfield. On the offense, penalty declined. First and ten. That penalty was, declined on Washington, and Oregon State takes possession of the football. That's a big stop right there. That was the option, wasn't it? Wasn't he going to come out and run the option? Yes, that's, that's correct. See right here with Tui coming up. Just a great play on the inside. Absolutely. And Marcus, with the, you lose that mesh with your tailback, it's all over. You got to keep the ball. And Brian Jones with a big tackle and causing a big fumble. Well, Brian Jones has had a remarkable year. Leads the Beavers in tackles this year. He's a kid with great range. 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 hurdler in high school. Runs 4'5", can create a lot of problems with his speed. But Jones with a stop, but Jackson with the recovery of the fumble. Oregon State takes up Bryant to Simonton. Trying to cross left to right out of the backfield. He is wrestled 
Motion stopped at about the four-yard line. That's the third first down in a row that the Beavers have run the ball. The first three at the start of the game, they passed the ball on first down. Interesting statistic and how the Beavers have changed to what they're doing just in the first six series. Jabari Issa stacks up the freshman Ken Simonton at the line of scrimmage. 7-7 seven, seven score with 10 seconds ticking down here to close the first quarter of play. And Oregon State will just let the quarter end. So the Beavers and Huskies tied at 7-7. It was Washington scoring first on their first possession of the afternoon. And Brock Ewart was sharp in his first start in two weekends with the link up to Chris Jurgens for the touchdown. His third of the year. And for Brock Ewart, his 43rd of his career. We'll be right back with more action from Husky Stadium in a moment. Back to Husky Stadium, so the Huskies stall and fumble the football inside the Oregon State five yard line. Oregon State now second and nine as we begin the second quarter of play with a score tied at 7 7. Along with Sunny Six Killer and Steve Freeze, I'm Kevin Calabro at Husky Stadium. It's homecoming. Oregon State four and three on the year. Terrence Bryant back to throw, nearly sacked, got rid of the football downfield. It was thrown short of the intended receiver and nearly intercepted. So you get an idea of Terrence Bryant's arm strength right there <laughs> and also why the Beavers have only 14 sacks this year and they've played some monstrous pressure teams. He can really get rid of the ball quickly. He had men draped around him that time and was able to unload. Wanda May Davis had the football thrown in the vicinity but there is a flag on the play. The Beavers will throw the football from anywhere on the field. Mike Riley believes it's just as safe as a as a carry with the fumbles they've had it is. <laughs> Offensive interference. You know, sometimes, Steve, if you just unload it and throw the ball downfield 40, 50 yards, you can't punt the ball that far. That is the truth. Good point. First downs, Oregon State four, UW seven, rushing yards 62 for Oregon State. And Washington 39. Brock Hewitt with 88 passing yards this afternoon. Well, if Oregon State has an inconsistency in special teams, it's their punt team. This is a very dangerous situation for the Beavers to be kicking deep in their own territory. Akeem Akbar is in the defensive backfield, the freshman from Compton for the Huskies. Husky shows some strength on the right side. Bryant's going to throw right side. Man open, but overthrown. Great route. Run out there and a beautiful pass, but just slightly too tall for Roddy Tompkins in coverage. One to me, Davis. And now Oregon State will have to kick from their own end zone. Uh, that is one of the toughest passes to complete out there. You can work and work your tail off on this throw, but it has really got to be timed perfectly, Steve. And you do that little out angle route 45 degrees it's got to be right on and it's a, a tougher heck pass to throw as you mentioned and the Beavers have not thrown it a lot. This is something new this game. They're trying to work the corners and get something deeper and down the field. Cortez will kick ordinarily it's Mike Fesler but they're going to go to the field goal kicker Cortez and he bangs this one high to the air taken by little Joe spins into the arms of the Beavers and he's down at the 43 yard line or actually about the 36 yard line of Oregon State. 
Cortez a little unhappy after getting the football off out of the end zone. 7 7 score. Ball game tied in the second quarter here at Husky Stadium. We'll be right back. Seven seven score and now the Huskies in great field position after recovering uh, the fumble Oregon State stalls inside their own five they're forced to put away the Huskies trying to turn the corner right side with Jason Harris getting wrestled down at the thirty five yard line boy there's a case where the running back didn't have enough confidence to, to run the football where he's supposed to it appeared to me Steve that that he missed the hole and bopped it outside when there was something set up in or uh, looked like over Aaron Dalen at right tackle. Big hole inside you right there. Oh, See it? Wow. Right That's oh, a oh, big oh. play and he's left with a free safety to beat came right out to Oregon State's uh, solid uh, weak side That's, linebacker. That's that vision we were talking about on the other side with Ken Simonton having that vision to cut back. Well, Jones makes the stop. And second and ten now for the Huskies. Hewitt play action fake handoff sets. Throwing over the middle, throws a dart, ball drop, but great coverage down there on Gerald Harris. That might have been more a case of a big time defensive play by Andre Holland than a drop ball by Gerald Harris. We'll take a look at the replay. Andre Holland is a fine cornerback. He started four years for Oregon State, one of the leaders in the Pac 10 in breakups, all time leader at Oregon State in pass breakups, as a matter of fact. Uh, three interceptions already this year and lost another one on a penalty. He can flat play man to man. But look at the time Brock has, has to throw the football. That is just a matter of not concentrating on the football and bringing it in. Yep, that was a drop ball. That was. 7-7 seven, seven score, 13-51 left second quarter. But it's great to have Gerald Harris back. He's still working on his timing. Here is Hewitt. And the flag flies. Hewitt was rolling out. Gerald Harris, of course, took that just that bone-jarring, crushing tackle sustained at Lincoln Nebraska where he actually bruised a kidney and the lung and so finally the Huskies have their receiving core back whole and somewhat healthy a penalty on the Huskies a procedure call well Kevin you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because one thing it, it takes a lot mentally for a receiver to get over yeah. that kind of blow oh, yeah. and maybe that was one of those reasons those arms weren't quite as long as they should have been because he was airborne in Lincoln when he took that shot I don't blame him. You and I took Advil after that game. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd get back in the broadcast booth quickly. My, my career would be over. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. 13.50 to go here in the second quarter. It's homecoming. The Huskies have dominated Oregon State. I think that's safe to say. They won 10 straight, 20 of the last 21. But this is not your father's beaver team. This is, uh, they're trying to turn the corner. Mike Riley with seven wins in his second year with Oregon State. You are back to throw. Fake handoff. Throwing deep down the middle. This is short. Makes a tremendous catch. It's going to stick for the touchdown. Andre Desishore in traffic with a touchdown. A little dance afterward that might have cost him a penalty. Let's don't take the fun out of the game. I know. That's. Yeah. I can see it if you go taunt the crowd or run around with your helmet off, but this kid has worked so hard in practice, guys. He, Coach Lambright is real proud of how he's stuck into the program, worked his tail off in practice in hopes of getting a reception like this for a touchdown. As a senior, Steve, a couple little jig steps. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. There was nothing there. So that, and that, that is, a, my opinion, a silly rule. You got to have some fun in this game. Yeah, that's uh, Kevin. You absolutely hit it on the head, though. I mean. It's got to be a point. Don't take the fun out of the game. Well, remember last weekend when Jarzinka ran the touchdown, uh, the grab the fence, went, went down to the fence and was wolfing to the crowd. There's got to be some consistency, and I, I think you, you've got to show a little more judgment there. That was a quick flag. Now, oh. Joe is backed up to his 25, a boot of 35. It's up. It looks like it's deep enough. Is it between the pins? It is. The extra point added by Joe Jarzinka, who's had field goals <laughs> this year of 20 and 35. So Mojo adds the extra point of the Huskies lead 14 to 7 on a 40 yard bomb from Ewart to Desishur. We'll be right back in a moment.
Brock Hewitt has been sharp this afternoon returning as the starter coming off the separated shoulder back on October the 36th for eight this afternoon 128 yards and is thrown for two TDs and this one was a beauty to Andre Desishore this weekend this afternoon has two catches for 80 yards in total and a TD. He can throw all the passes can he son. Yes he, he dropped that one in. Perfect catch. Good look at the quarterback little play action but again they've been running the football a little bit again that will affect the safety how they see the play Steve and right here you see that he did get behind Armin Hatcher uh, the strong side safety the Beavers running there what appeared to be a, a weak side zone bringing the strong safety back to the middle to help out didn't do much good in that situation. Greg Ainsworth the senior will take the kickoff and he is hammered. I mean hammered just across the 15 yard line Curtis Williams just waiting for his opportunity sneaks up out of the weeds and plastered him. But Ainsworth says hey that wasn't that was, you know. our next game on Fox Sports Northwest the Bears and the Beavers next Sunday at one and then the Huskies and the Trojans next Sunday at 6 p.m. on the replay. Tough stretch of games coming up for the Huskies. Oregon State football first and ten the ball resting at the 16 yard line the backup Jonathan Miller rolling out right side throwing back here across the middle to the 26 yard line Greg Ainsworth with the catch. Well that was Jonathan Smith he is the backup he came in last week first real uh, opportunity when Terrence Bryant got hurt he's a red shirt uh, freshman he's a walk on. He's done a very good job so far against a very tough situation against Arizona last week giving Terrence Bryant a blow because of his injury last week. He isn't hurt today. You know Mike Riley told me that also more than just the injury this has settled Terrence Bryant down. He felt comfortable today bringing in Smith early. Smith the freshman back to throw throws a bullet to the 35 yard line but that's just a pickup of a few yards there. Ronnie Tompkins makes the catch want to meet Davis the youngster down there making the stop now Steve will they roll Jonathan Smith out because being 510 and as Kevin pointed out earlier they have a huge offensive line in height will he stick in the pocket or will they roll him out they'll do both he has a very good athletic mind he will find holes from a straight drop back position but yes they will get him outside on a bootleg I'm um, off the Simonton uh, running game that they have Huskies have been tough up front with the 26 sacks their linebackers have been bolstered by Lester Hounds continued good health Lester Towns here's Smith throwing right side skidding and sliding in there for a nice catch at the 39 yard line is Tim Alexander and the Huskies this weekend figure to throw a different wrinkle at Oregon State as you can see on that play they're playing up on the line they're bumping receivers as they come out of the backfield they're susceptible maybe to the deep ball but they're a little tougher around the football as Jim Lambright expressed earlier this week. Probably the most important change in our defense has been the fact that we've started to attack more. We feel real good about uh, our defense having some fundamentals now that uh, can allow us to uh, man up in coverage and then kind of cheat uh, our front enough to stop the run and to get after quarterbacks. And there's a prime example of getting beat on the deep ball because you're playing a little bit tighter on the front line but Kenny Walker did a nice job to cover the tight end Martin Maurer who dropped the football. Well that was a great opportunity for Oregon State right there. Maurer has made some big catches for the Beavers so far this season as Steve knows but that time he should have had that ball Steve. Tight end down the middle the last two weeks the Beavers have dropped four passes that all would have changed the, changed the complexion of the football game. Marty has very very good hands. He's a true sophomore will catch a lot of balls at Oregon State but they need those plays. Robert Prescott one of the tandem receivers wide to the near side out of Seattle Jonathan Smith back to throw wheels at left side Simonton with the swing pass catch but brought down from behind at his own 45 yard line Jabari Issa Jabari Issa recognizing the play right away and running out there now for a big guy this guy can motor you watch number 95 here guys he sees it right there he knows what's going on. And he just turns on the motor. Of course, Simonton cutting back helps to play a little bit for him to make the tackle. Nice to have speed like that out of that size, too. Wow. Third and four, 11 22 left in the second quarter. The Huskies lead Oregon State 14 7. 
two out of four Oregon State converting a third down situation. Smith the freshman. Hard rush left side rolls up nice pass over the middle big gainer 35 down to the 30 inside the 30 yard line goes Tim Alexander Jonathan Smith just reacted beautifully as Nigel Burton came in there with a blitz off his right side but being a right hander Burton came in on the side that the quarterback's better able to see if you're a right hander. That's absolutely right. You, know, you got to get after the quarterback here. You see the rush from the right side. Good job right there by Smith to, again wide open in the middle Steve and be able to pick up a guy like Alexander my God if I was a quarterback my eyes would get pretty big too. <laughs> what do you mean if you were a quarterback. Well. <laughs> that a young is, one a young. One. <laughs> that's a fine football player right there Tim Alexander. 14 to 7 Washington 10 44 to go first half Smith back tosses a pass. Here's a post pass overthrown. Man was out there wanted to meet Davis in coverage. Right with James Battle stride for stride and Smith wisely just threw it away. Well, Oregon State, James Battle, I was looking at their averages for wide receivers. He averages nearly 16 yards of reception, Steve, so I can see why Smith would like to hunt him down. Well, he's big. He's 6'3, got great speed. He's been nicked up by both years at Oregon State University, but probably the, the biggest problem with his passing offense so far this year is what you mentioned. The average per throw, it isn't down the field enough. It's 10 yards or less. Second down and 10, ball at the 27. Here's the handoff to Simonton. Little juke fake trying to bounce outside. Kent. Knocked out of bounds by Turi Butler down there at about the 27 yard line. A gain maybe of one. Well, that's one yard. I didn't think he was going to gain anything. <laughs> and it just shows Simonton's ability to bust it. The guy is hard to see as we mentioned he's only he's, he's safe five seven and we don't know if it's really five seven but he's hard to see but that time Trey Butler staying home and making the play. Well, the quarterbacks listed at five ten so that makes it five seven. <laughs> OK you look at him side by side. Simonton from Pittsburgh California. Ten and a half minutes remaining. First half Smith quick drop looks over the middle slants a pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver Tim Alexander actually Craig Ainsworth Greg Ainsworth the intended receiver and Smith threw a bullet that time figuring he had to throw it through traffic some very catchable balls that should have been caught today four times already there are plays to be made by a receiver for Oregon State they just have to come through in order for the Beavers to be successful nice Nice first series for Jonathan Smith, I think. Yep. Excellent. Moving the ball around, good throws. Five of eight, 56 yards, and as long as the 27 yard hookup. Now the boot blocked, and it comes right back to the holder of Oregon State. He's uh, overwhelmed at the Husky 38 yard line. So Jose Cortez has the intended field goal kick in one block last weekend. He was three for four, however. And the Huskies' coverage that time was excellent. They bust through the middle. Take a keep your eye on number 95, Jabari Issa again. Looks to me right up to gut. He's able to come three and the surge right there, Steve. He got three or four yards on the initial surge and, and it looked like Keith D. Domenico, the center, couldn't uh, adjust for it. Well, D. Domenico moves to guard in that situation, and the Beavers were very worried about that, Sonny. Jurich swings it out to the right side to the freshman Willie Hurst. He is driven down shy of the 35 yard line. Oregon State's coaches thought that was a very, very strong point in the uh, special teams of the Huskies that the blocking ability because of the strength of the defensive line and the penetration they, they get. Simon, <laughs> just give me the ball. Okay. Give me the ball. Let's change that play a little bit. Put it outside. <laughs> Huskies set up second and 12, leading 14 to 7. Urit has been sharp this afternoon. Long count back to throw. Angling it left side as the man open on the flat. Desisher with the catch. That is a long pass for that quarterback to make out there. A yard shy at the first down the market right at the 45. He nearly threw the width of the field that time, Sonny. I was going to say, when you're on this near hash mark and throwing to the far side of the field, that looked like a hang time on a punt. <laughs> Long throw. Right there, nice break. Crisp break. Float a little bit at the end, but good job right here. The reason that's successful is Brock Hewitt 
through it, so the receiver had to come back to the ball. Andre Holland with the stop. Best afternoon I've seen Andre Dessasher have in uh, the two years I've been with the Huskies covering on the television side. He dropped a pass, remember, and it would have been a TD for Marcus Tuyas Sopo in the Utah State game. It was a runaway game at that point, but you know he'd like to make amends. Pat Conniff leans ahead for the first down, and Washington is again on the move, leading 14 to 7. Inoki Brechterfield with the stop. Well, you know, you go back to that, Kevin. It's a Dessasher has worked so hard the coaches are real proud of the way he's hung in there and worked hard but it's it's just amazing how that confidence grows when you're forced to play and you actually come to the to the table uh, although he dropped that big pass but he's still gotten better and better we haven't called Brechterfield's name much this afternoon 17 and a half career sacks and he's kind of the stud up front for Oregon State Washington's line has done an excellent job. Ewan throws left side. Man, did he take a lick, though? Pass complete at about the line of scrimmage to Chris Jurgens in a game maybe of a uh, half yard on the play. I know that Elliot Silver's coming in the ball game had a big chore, Steve, and that is blocking one on one with Brechterfield. And, and having your big quarterback back in the game and Brock Heward, I'm sure Elliot Silver is feeling pretty good about himself right now. Well, no question. I noticed that the Huskies have taken the uh, running back to that side to protect him on sure passing downs, but that the uh, tackle and it's either side because Brechterfield moves around has done an excellent job so far. Second and nine now for Washington Huskies lead 14 7. Here with the play action he gives to Willie Hurst. Hurst is submarine by his own man a fallen offensive lineman trips up Willie Hurst. And who was it that fell down there? Steve could that have been somebody we were just talking about <laughs> this guy right here 56. This is very typical. He will go straight down you see him. Now watch this move. He goes down, creates havoc, makes the play. It just is yep. astonishing to me what he does. He was a nose guard as a true freshman at Oregon State and started at about 230 pounds. That and the, or, the Huskies could have been called for holding. It looked like uh, Chad Ward grabbed him by the head. Great play by Brechter. Third and 11 now, passing down. Ewart back to throw up on the tiptoes. Flings a pass out here to the near side. Gerald Harris, He's gotta go north-south. Kind of went back a little bit after making the catch, but uh, he is hammered down there at the 46. He bounces up, appears to be all right, and if he is okay after that shot, we can pronounce him fully healthy because Jonathan Jackson just teed him up. <laughs> well, there goes Harris under his own power. Watch his lick. Let's look at uh, Reggie Davis. Reggie Davis probably doing a great job and help with Aaron Dalen, but Reggie Davis has the quickness to stay with Brechterfield on those moves, whereas a big tackle would need a little bit of help. I think you're right. I think that's a very good move, uh, good strategy by the Huskies. Fleming has done an excellent job this year. He scoops this one hopper. He leans and pops this one out off the toe. Look at the skid it takes down to the 15-yard line. And Oregon State will have the football. Down at about the 28, a flag flies down there. Might have been a late hit. As Oregon State was driven out of bounds, down there was Tim Alexander making a catch. Ryan Fleming did an excellent job to field the low snap, one hop it, and then uh, measure the oncoming rush and snake that kick around the oncoming rusher. That's twice this year he's done that, Kevin. And on this play, Oregon State again hurt by a penalty. Pretty good return on that kick, but I think they got a block from behind. Illegal block on the back on the return team during the return. 10-yard penalty. First and 10. Tim Alexander has just started returning punts the last two or three weeks. As you look at this, Braithwaite has a good shot at him here. Obviously, it isn't a penalty because the ball hit the ground. Good See, call. Yep. Right here coming up from behind. Micah Moore, 27 from the Beavers. And boy, I tell you what, you, you think that. <laughs> Let him go because Tim Alexander had already reached. He was beyond that point, Steve. Well, it's too late in the season for those kind of mistakes, especially Micah is a guy who knows how to play football. He's played played a lot for three seasons. Jonathan Smith, the promising freshman quarterback, will stay on this time. Hands off to Simonson. And, man, he is roped up by Mac Tuiaea and dragged down. Nice tackle by Big Mac up front. Big Mac using his big presence in the middle up there. Ken Simonton will look over and see number 78. I don't want to see you much this afternoon. But this is great stuff right here, Steve. Oh, absolutely. 96 yards. He was over 100 uh, until about two games ago. He's just played super. He's got a 400-yard game. Really, he was at 99 
uh, lost, was over 100 and lost it back and had a 200 yard game earlier in the year. That's quite impressive. That's a lot of yards. Smith now back to throw, angling a pass to the far sideline. A man is under it, trying to haul it down with one hand. Looked like there was contact made down there. And the official who was on the sideline does not make the call, but wow. he, I don't think, had a good perspective of the call. He was standing down near the Washington bench. The official that was downfield in the middle of the field makes the call, and I think it was a good one. It looked like there was some contact made while the ball was in the air. James Battle, the intended receiver. That was right in front of Jim Lambright on the Washington bench. I think we have to look at the contact and how. Yeah. Hold on. Pass interference on the defense, grabbing the arm. Automatic first down. Jerry Butler, the penalized individual. Take a look. Watch. I uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, he did have contact with his the receiver's left arm right here. Yep. There it is. Yeah, that's contact. And I can see right there where the side judge was blocked. Yeah, he could with the Oregon State exactly. body. That's good officiating right there. 32 yard line for Oregon State now. First and ten with five and a half minutes to go in the first half. And the Huskies lead 14 to 7. Smith has been effective. 5 10 rolling out left, throwing on the move. A jump pass complete. Holy cow! A little Lou Jack jump pass at the 43 yard line. Tim Alexander with a catch. Well, Sonny, you know as well as I do that a lot of times that kind of pass is more effective than a perfect pass. Jonathan Smith does that extremely well. He scored last week just putting the ball up in the air. In fact, sometimes Terrence Bryant has too strong an arm and can't do that with the ball. But this guy knows where people are and throws that on purpose. Well, the Oregon State offensive line should be credited also because Young Smith is having some time to throw the football. Huskies are not applying enough pressure on him, and, and you're right about that. Good job by Alexander. Smith now again throwing on the run. He throws it over the middle. There was nobody down there wearing the black and orange and white of Oregon State. <laughs> Plenty of Huskies around it though, and Jones had it thrown right at him. He dropped it. Pretty cool, cool customer for a redshirt freshman, seeing only his second real playing uh, time. Drew Walk on Oregon State founding, recruiting uh, one of his teammates two years ago. <laughs> kid named Dustin Jans, who's, who played a lot as a true freshman last year and is injured this year, but they were watching film and found this young guy. He said, Come aboard, he's paying his own way. Won't be for long. 14 to 7. The Huskies <laughs> lead. Here's Smith with the handoff up the middle. Simonson trying to get the hard earned yards on the ground. Grinds ahead for two, maybe three. Jabari Issa with the stop. And he's joined in there by Josh Smith. Coach Conklin, Jerry Conklin, coming back to the program this year, Steve. He's got that great NFL experience. Paid his time doing the grad assistant work here with the UW and got hired as receivers coach. and Coach Lambright's real happy with the way he's worked with these young quarterbacks and receivers. Brings a, lot of, brings a lot of ideas over from the Redskins where he played for Joe Gibbs, who's quite an innovator. A lot of wide open passing scheme. Smith back to throw, swings it out left side. That ball was tipped. Up for grabs. Flag on the play on this third and seven deal for Oregon State. And Matt Tuiaia in the vicinity creating some interference. Josh Smith as well. Let's see. Not sure who got their hand on the ball. Was it Tuiaia? No, it was Smith. Yeah, it looked like Josh Smith on the near side, the right defensive end. There's no flag. The ball was tipped. Therefore, because the ball hit the eligible lineman, it's not a penalty. Well, I tell you what, though, Steve, this play was set up perfectly. If they gotten the ball out to the outside right here, perhaps this is that 5'10 height again going against a defensive end at 6'4, 6'4 and a half. Exactly. No question about it. There was a big play there if the Beavers make it. A little lob pass. He needs to lob that ball over the defender. But again, Josh Smith being there with the big paw. Let's see who's punting this time for the Beavers. Looks like Jose Cortez again. He's not the normal punter, but he kicks the ball real high and real quick. As he did the last time, he sent a missile straight up, and he does this time. He's going to angle it. Jarzinka down. What's this? It can't be Joe signaling the fair catch. It's Tory Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Butler was back there. He signals the fair catch. That's your first tip off that Joe is not back there to make the catch. We'll take a break. The Huskies will take over on the touchback at the 20. Joe says no touchbacks to Ray. 14-7 Huskies lead with 4.06 left here in the second period. We'll return in a moment.
Huskies lead Oregon State 14 to 7. 406 left in the first half. Homecoming at Husky Stadium. Weeknights at 7. Tune in to Fox Sports Northwest tonight. Recap the weekend's football highlights and look ahead to the coming week's opponents. Coach Riley talks about his upcoming game with Cal on Thursday. And Coach Lambride looks ahead to the USC Trojans on Friday. That's Fox Sports Northwest tonight. Every weeknight at 7 on Fox Sports Northwest. Along with Sunny Six Killer, Kevin Calabro joining us in the booth this afternoon. Steve Priest to give us a, a very good perspective of the Oregon State program this year. Mike Riley, four and three with them now in his second year. And right now they are battling the Huskies tough. Washington football leading 14 to 7. Willie Hurst is the man in the backfield now for Washington. Jason Harris got to start his first as a senior. Here's the handoff to Harris, or I should say Willie Hurst. Trying to slam right side, but stacked up at the line of scrimmage for no appreciable gain. Aaron Wells with a stop. Todd Johnson out of nearby Bellevue, Newport High School. He's been a sack master. We'll come after him. Oregon State's defensive captain, Ryan Rogers, number 58, an outstanding prospect for Sunday play and real good football player. Has not played since the first series. Micah Moore has taken his place. Um, there's got to be an injury. I don't see him on the sideline either. Here's Ewer now back to throw in a second down situation. Quick drop, throws out left side, juggling but making the catch and being run down and halted down there at about the 25 yard line. Dane Looker. That's a nice throw right there by Brock Hewitt. And if anybody really, although they've seen it so far in the first half, that had a lot of zip on it on the outside. Career at Washington, pretty impressive. That's right. You know, and he was going to try to catch Damon, uh, his older brother, Damon York, for the UW career passing record of 5,692 yards. He needs 1,088 coming into today's game. He has 146 yards thus far this afternoon. He's got a long way to go in the remaining games. But if anybody can do it, he's at three 300 yard plus games in his career and here's a pass over the middle for a pickup of five or six and a first down Reggie Davis the man slanting over the middle. Well the Huskies have gone to a little bit quicker scheme here Steve you see that time Brock you are taking that little three step drop jumping it right there to the tight end who was one on one with Micah Moore and you'll see it right here Micah Moore now that and Reggie are probably about the same size and weight. No you're wrong. Reggie weighs a lot more than he does. <laughs> He's a small tight end. He's one of the smallest the UW's had in a long time. Here's a pass outside that was nearly picked off. Man in coverage down there was Brian Jones who slipped in front of the receiver. He had that in two hands, but it flipped free. Well, that's the guy we've talked about with the tremendous range. He's in the top ten in, uh, in sacks as well as tackles for loss uh, and in tackles. And he's 6'5 he's with great speed, great speed. And he uh, came to Oregon State uh, not as a linebacker certainly and it's really developed into a fine fine linebacker from the weak side. Second and ten now for Washington 223 left in the first half the Huskies lead 14 7 Dessa sure is the man of motion. He's had a big afternoon play action. You takes the handoff going up top of the long ball. It's going to be intercepted. It's tipped and controlled at his own 31 yard line. The ball under thrown. There were three three defenders in the area free safety Aaron Wright. Tips the ball, volleys it, and comes down with the first interception of the afternoon of Brock Ewer. Well, Brock again having a lot of time to throw the football, this time down the middle. The safety area, Steve, where you thought would be a lot of problems today, but you can see the inside out. Worked well. Aaron Wright in the right position on a ball that was thrown a little short. Well, that's a big help for the Beavers uh, for the obvious reason, but also because Aaron Wright was number three on the depth chart a week ago. When Terrence Carroll got hurt, second guy, Bo Marthaler, came in and ruined the knee. And there you see Aaron right there, big play, and that gets him started. <laughs> There's the best hit he's had. That's right. He was charged up about that. Smith takes over. Slips. Nearly goes down to a knee. Oh, how did he get out of that jam? He slips the noose, but then is hauled down as Lester Towns maintains the coverage and pulls him to the turf for a loss. Boy, great balance that time. I thought he was down, Steve, but he was did a great job of keeping his balance. See this very. He did it though. <laughs> Oregon State's in there. Hurry up, offense now. I'm a little bit surprised Terrence Bryant isn't in. He must be injured again. 
Second and 12. He took a helmet in the back in the Arizona game last weekend. Here Smith flushed out of the pocket, rolling right side, trying to throw downfield. Pump fakes. He's going to run out of bounds. That'll stop the clock at the 130 mark. Now, the last thing that Oregon State wants to do is panic and throw a bad ball in traffic and give the Huskies the football back with a minute to go. So they'll they'll probably just contain things here. Third and two. They'll bring Simonton in, obviously, and Bryant will stay on the sideline. Tells it all, killed right. the Beavers this year. Tells it all right there. You put that together with the running graphic, and you've got the story for Oregon State this year. They take care of the football. They win games. UW opponents this year, 37 of 95 and third down conversions. Third and two. Smith, the freshman quarterback. Great play. Lester Towns up the middle. Freight train express coming through. Punctual as usual. Lester Towns hauls him down. Washington needs to call a timeout here with over a minute to play. Give themselves an opportunity to run their two minute offense, but Lester Towns knifing through here. No one there, Steve. Well, you know what's got to happen is that back's got to see it and step up, Sonny, before the play and get reset. Quarterback's got to adjust that audible for the cadence so the, the, uh, the guy has a chance. He kills himself there with a the quick cadence. 14 to 7, the Huskies lead the Beavers with a minute 20 left in the first half, and Oregon State has a decision. We'll be back with it in a moment. I think they're. Locker room. 14 to 7 Huskies lead the Beavers. It's hardcore football on Fox Sports Northwest. Ronnie Hot, Bill Moss, Ron Pitt show you the real NFL. Hardcore X's and O's, hardcore blood, sweat, and tears. Hardcore football for the hardcore fan. It's hardcore football Tuesday nights at 8 on Fox Sports Northwest. Well, Oregon State elects to go with Jose Cortez. To punt the football away, it'll hang a high one. Jersey at 30. Oh, it came down off the knee. The ball ripped away, but Joe on the turf was able to gather it in and smother it with a 111 left. That could have been a disaster. That'd have given Oregon State the football with a minute left at the 30-yard line of Washington, but Joe was able to bring it back home. Well, you know he never calls for a fair catch. And right here, he actually had an opportunity to field it cleanly, just took his eyes off it. And fortunately for him, and unfortunately for the Beavers, uh, he was able to get that back. That's why Cortez is punting, it's just to get the ball way up in the air. Uh, the other punter, the normal punter, Mike Best, was a little bit inconsistent that way. Husky's hungry. Good looking Husky dog. Here's Ewart back to throw now. Good. Throw outside to Hurst. He's trying to jitterbug out of the backfield and gets nowhere. Uh, that's at about the, the 27 yard line. He's brought down. First delayed and blocked in the backfield and bounced outside. But Oregon State covered it beautifully. Now Washington quickly. They don't huddle. They mass at the line. Europe will bark signals there with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Brock's going to take a five step drop and look. He'll angle the pass near sideline. Desha sure there. Reaching out for the grab. Out of bounds at the 39. Nope. Caught it in bounds. But rolled out. Fox stops with 40 seconds left. And the Huskies have it down. Oregon State 41. What a catch by Andre. Great catch, great throw. But again, that time, Aaron Wright, who just had made the interception, did not get over in coverage in time, Steve. This is something with that ball in the air like that. He's got to be able to break to the football and, and offer some help for the cornerback. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It looked like a two deep, and he has to get there. Cornerback uh, Ricky Walker looked like he got a fairly good pop on the receiver, but the safety just doesn't get to make the play. Andre, you can see him dropping back in coverage right there. Andre Dessischer making sure he made that grab and he's having a career day <laughs> but, you know, 124 <laughs> yards with a TD I'll tell you the, the cornerback has to get a better shot 
Wright has, that's a tough play for Wright to get there. And now that you see the cornerback's uh, uh, effort on the receiver, he didn't get a pop enough to get the uh, safety over there where he should be. I say that as a former safety. Yeah, I know. I, I see <laughs> you're protecting that position. <laughs> Brock had the usual tight spiral on that ball, unlike the one that he threw for the interception a moment ago that wobbled. Well, normally the safeties are lined up in, a, in that kind of coverage. They will stay. You see the numbers on the field and the hash marks, Kevin, and that's kind of their guide where they're going to maintain themselves so they don't get beat deep down the middle. And this is a good call, perhaps by the Huskies seeing something by that Oregon State defense. Well, it's not a defense normally that Oregon State plays. They don't play a lot of too deep. They play more man to man with a free safety, but with the free safety change, you got to change it a little bit. Right. It makes a difference. First and 10 for Washington, and the ball resting at Oregon State's 41. Gerald Harris wide right, Desishur and Looker wide left. First, the man in the backfield. Here's the throw near sideline. The completion, and Gerald Harris driven out of bounds. He got off his feet again that time, and makes the catch. And they'll have it now at Oregon State's. 34 yard line. Ricky Walker in coverage makes the stop for the Beavers. 35 seconds left now. I know one thing. Down. The Huskies are not throwing towards Andre Holland, who covers the wide side of the field. Most of the throws have been going to the near side against Ricky Ricky Walker, number four. Well, there you see the guy that's a four year starter and heck of a football player. He is wide side, so he's got the tough cover. Normally just lines up inside and plays man to man. Husky second and third. Ewart, happy feet thrown right side. Just as sure with the catch, but he's held inbounds and the clock continues to roll. Andreas thought had enough room there to scamper out of bounds, but he didn't. Well, Brian Jones with a good wrap up down there. Husky first down. That's why they stopped the clock here with 22 seconds left. I think Andre brought that to their attention. <laughs> Good play by Andre. Got reversed. It. Well, the Huskies will have triple receivers left. Ewart has been outstanding. 15 for 19, 200 yards, even now, and two TDs. And he's got Davis playing wide left side. And he will just come back and spike the ball to stop the clock with 18 seconds left. And they've got one timeout remaining. They want to hang on to that, get down to that field goal situation. Make a couple opportunities here toward the end zone. Spread that thing out. And I think if I was a Husky coaching staff right now, I'd challenge Andre Vesher and Ricky Walker here on the near side, or have Ricky Walker challenged by Andre. I think you're right. That seems like the wise thing. I, I look for the Beavers to try to cover up and help out by bringing their safeties and giving inside help uh, to those cornerbacks. We've got Davis now at the tight end on the right side. Hurst is stacked up, offset on the right. You were back to throw. Hard rush. He's got one on one on coverage. He throws over the middle on the run. Touchdown! He held the ball. What a catch! Andre Desasur with a tremendous catch. Two TDs on the afternoon. Gentlemen, you called it a 30 yard hookup. And how about the job that Brock York did? Scrambling, he was able to become aware, stay aware of the line of scrimmage on the run and made the throw. I tell you, Aaron Wright, I believe number eight, made a tragic decision. He saw Brock Hewitt come out of the pocket, moved up in there, and Andre Desishir absolutely had Ricky Walker beat all the way, Steve. No question. When you're supposed to be short or deep in that middle, you got to stay there. Jarzinka adds the extra point, and the Huskies score, getting the football back. With a minute left, they roll down the field and make it 21 to 7. A big score there for Washington. Ten seconds left in the first half, and we'll be right back.
Andre Desasure grabs his second TD pass of the afternoon, 156 yards, wow. six catches, and Ewart with 230 yards in total, 16 to 21. He has three TDs this afternoon. Skirsky will punt alone. This is going to be fielded down at about the 15-yard line. And Alexander still on his feet, dragged down, flag on the play. Three seconds remain in the first half of the Huskies leading 21 to 7. Sam Blanche did a great job that time. You know, you can't get Tim Alexander outside. He just tackled his, oh, his blocker up front. <laughs> Tim's really becoming more at home uh, in, in his new position at flanker and also returning kicks. He's a guy with nearly 4,000 yards in total offense for the first three seasons. Block in the back on the return. 10 yard penalty, first and 10. And the Huskies attend to a. Uh, Player who's fallen on the field at about the 35 yard line in front of their own bench. Andre Desichur out of Los Angeles, great track man in LA. And Roy Easton, he's talking to, I played with here at the Husky Stadium. Roy, right now, is probably one of the biggest in the business as far as getting down there and being an usher. He's going to kill me for saying that, but there he is. Great guy to have around on that sideline. He's, uh, he's a great guy and he's been here for a long time, staying around the program. And, and good to see. Hate to see this, though. However, absolutely. Odell, Odell George. George. Yep. He's been getting a lot of playing time, Kevin, and I've seen him play more and more each game this year. And certainly, you don't like to see any depth at all, Steve. As you guys know, Oregon State with a depth situation every year. This year has been particularly good up until the last 10 days uh, with injuries. Only one major injury until then. Now several out, uh, depending on whether Rodgers is really hurt or not. He is not on the sideline that I can see. They're starting strong side linebacker and team captain. Smith will hand off up the middle. Simonton trying to break it. Scoots across midfield. Trying to make a hard cut. Drop down at the 40, and that'll end the first half of play. That is the end of the first half of homecoming here in Seattle. With the score, the Washington Huskies 21 and the Oregon State Beavers 7. Let's go to Tom Glasgow now in the Fox Sports Northwest tonight studio to see what's in store for us next week on the show.